Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to take a look at how to use a pressure enthalpy chart. These charts are mainly used for the thermodynamic cycles such as the refrigeration and steam power cycles. Now both the pressure and enthalpy of a refrigerant can change as it is conveyed through various components within a refrigeration cycle. So here we're only going to consider the refrigeration um, cycles and we'll look at the pressure enthalpy data for different types of refrigerants. Now in both the evaporator and the condenser, then the enthalpy of the refrigerant will change and the pressure remains constant. Now during the compression step, work would be done by the compressor which would result in an increase in the enthalpy of the refrigerant along with an increase in the pressure. Now the expansion valve is a constant enthalpy process that allows the liquid refrigerant under the high pressure to pass through and become low pressure with the refrigerant system. Now it must be noted that in order to fully understand the pressure enthalpy charts, it's a good idea to make sure that you're familiar with the different types of thermodynamic cycles. So we do have some very useful information on our website on all the different types of thermodynamic cycles. So be sure to check that one out. I'll leave a link in the description to that course. Now the charts on the diagrams have been used extensively within the literature to present the thermodynamic properties of the refrigerants. Now you can obtain these values and these charts from a wide range of published literature. So we do have a online resource library that you can have access to via our website whereby you can find all the relative data that you need in order to solve some of these problems. Now these charts are particularly useful during the conceptual stage of a refrigeration system design. And we'll see some of these charts in just a second. Now the most commonly used charts are the pressure and enthalpy values which are on an X, Y axis. And it would look something like this. So what we have here is we can, we've got a plot of the pressure against the enthalpy. And what we have here is this is our saturated line. So this uh, black line here. Now in this section or this region of the curve, what we have is the saturated liquid. Now anything to this side is the saturated liquid um, phase. This is the saturated liquid line curve. Now on this side, after the critical point, then what we have is the superheated region where we have only the vapor phase present. Now within the curve, what we have is a mixture of both liquid and vapor. Now, it must be noted that for the pressure enthalpy chart, what we have to do is fix the temperature. So these would be fixed at a given set of different temperatures. So you would see that this is just a very generic simplified diagram. We'll see some real diagrams in just a second. But what we have is different temperatures that are plotted with the given enthalpy and pressures. So that way, if we know the temperature and say the enthalpy, we can calculate the corresponding pressure. Or if we know the pressure and the temperature, we can determine the corresponding enthalpy. Now a typical uh, pressure enthalpy chart would look something like this. So what we have here is again our enthalpy and our absolute pressure for the refrigerant of 134A. Now what we have, this is our characteristic curve here. So if we highlight this, then again our critical point is at this stage here. Now I'm just going to highlight this curve here. So what we can then do is we have a range of different temperatures here. So by fixing, say, the pressure, uh, let's see, we'll go for 10 uh, kilopascals. So at 10 kilopascals, what we can do is 
come along here and when we intersect the curve then this is our saturated liquid line so what we could do is draw a line down here and that would tell us the entropy at the saturated liquid to be I think in this case is 160 kilojoules per kilogram now if we wanted to know the corresponding saturated uh, vapor value then what we can do is come along to after the critical point draw down and then we would get the corresponding entropy for uh, that set of conditions now we do have here a set of different uh, values so here we have the meters cubed per kilogram so we have a density here as well so it just depends on the type of system that we are plotting but again we can fix the temperature in order to achieve um, a given set of values so here this depicts that we have a temperature volume entropy uh, chart so these are all the pieces of information that are represented here on this chart now another type of chart that involves the pressure and entropy values plotted along the x and y axis now the entire refrigeration cycle comprises of the evaporator compressor condenser and the expansion valve are conveniently depicted on a pressure entropy chart now in the chart that we'll see here this confirms that the specifications of the International Institute of Refrigerants, so the IIR, that the value of the entropy of saturated liquid is assumed to be 200 kilojoules per kilogram at a chosen temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. Now within the bell-shaped curve, the dryness fraction curves are useful in determining the liquid and the vapour content of the refrigerant because that is a key parameter to know is what the dryness factor is that way we know how much um, energy can be transported to vaporize the saturated liquid into saturated vapor now if we consider a simple vapor compression refrigeration system whereby the refrigerant enters the expansion valve as saturated liquid and leaves the evaporator as saturated vapor then such a system would look like this so we begin our system here at saturated vapour, we then head into the superheated uh, region, we then come back at constant pressure, whereby we then lose our enthalpy, so we go from, this is our saturated um, vapour at our elevated pressure, P2, we then start to do the con condensation, so we turn our saturated vapour into saturated liquid through the expansion valve. We then come down into our P2 to P1, so that's where we alleviate the pressure. We then go from um, constant pressure from H1, so this is our enthalpy at point 0.1, all the way to our enthalpy at our saturated vapour at the given pressure P1. And that's the, the cycle and the system that we have for a vapour compression refrigeration cycle. Now as the dry saturated vapour enters the compressor, the condition of the refrigerant is represented by the location A. And the refrigerant vapour at the pressure P1 and the enthalpy P, uh, H2. Now during the compression stroke, the vapours are compressed isentropically, so that means at a constant entropy, and this would be to the pressure P2. Now location B is the superheated vapour region, which we've seen on the chart. So we had our curve here, and then we started at A, and then this was B here, so this is our superheated uh, vapour region. Now, the entropy of the refrigerant increases from H2 to H3, because remember, this was H2, and this was H3. So, and then this was just our A, B, C, D, and E. Then, in the condenser, the, uh, the first superheat is then removed to de-superheat the section, so that's from B to C. And then, the latent heat of the condensation is removed from C to D. So remember, latent heat is the phase change, it's not a 
that um, a decrease in the temperature itself is a phase change. So that's where we go from saturated vapor to saturated liquid. Now the saturated liquid enters the expansion valve at location D. The pressure drops to P1 while the enthalpy remains constant. And then the flashing of the refrigerant occurs within the expansion valve, which results in location E. And then the liquid vapour mixture of the refrigerant accepts the heat in the evaporator, converts completely to the vapour phase, and the evaporator section is then represented by the horizontal line from E to A. So again, that part of the graph whereby we have uh, this section here, so from E to A, this is where the heat from in the evaporator, the refrigerant will accept that, and it will go from a mixture of, sa of uh, liquid and vapour to pure uh, saturated vapour. So that amount of liquid that's present in here will ob uh, obtain and accept the heat within the evaporator. And this will increase the enthalpy from this point, which is H1, to this point, which is H2. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in allowing you to analyse and read the data for pressure enthalpy charts. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Leave any comments in the comment section below and hope to see you in another video.